Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. We are the Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers. We're playing Reading, or as they're known in the United States, Reading. There is no rain in England, so I don't know what's wrong, but um, hopefully it will rain soon. Because otherwise, um, you know, the English people might start to feel joy. We wouldn't want that. We need them gloomy so that they can keep writing great novels. Um, so today we're up against uh, Reading. And we are going to beat the holy living crap out of them. Uh, we do not have John Green or John Green up front. We have Voluptuous Paracard, and of course Stone Cold Steve with the C. Austin Leroy Williamson, and Beefstock in center mid. And then in uh, in the back, we've got, um, you know, the usuals, Fitz Hall, etc. And I believe we have uh, we have uh, Rampage the Ginger in um, in the back as well today. So that's exciting. Uh, and we start the game with a foul. Awesome. I also can't even remember what I was going to talk about today because I'm now in bad mood about having about being called a fowler. Alice Paracard's in the audience today. Um, uh, she comes to every game, even those in which her husband doesn't start. She's a huge Swoodley Pooper supporter. Um, and uh, look at the run that her husband is having right now. And a pal, not nah, pass left something to be desired. Um, I will talk to you today about all of the authors I know and what they are like in real life. I will tell you the secrets of America's young adult authors, and to a lesser extent, Australia's. Oh, Stone Cold Steve with the C. Austin can't finish. Let's start uh, in reverse alphabetical order with Marcus Zusak. So many of you will know Marcus Zusak as the author of The Book Thief, um, or the book uh, which, which in Australia is known as The Messenger, and in, in the United States, one size fits all, no. Um, and in the United States is known as I Am the Messenger. Um, both brilliant books, as are his uh, first three novels. Marcus Zusak, I think, is one of the best... Um, best writers, period. Um, he doesn't, I, I, you know, not one of the best YA writers, one of the best writers alive in the world, in my opinion. I think really, really highly of him um, as a person, as a writer. Um, in person, he is about the nicest guy you're ever going to meet, and I'm not just saying that. He is uh, uh, not just one of the nicest writers I've ever met, but one of the nicest people I've ever encountered. He's funny, he's generous, he's everything that you would expect um, the author of The Book Thief and I Am the Messenger to be. Um, unfortunately, he is also ridiculously good-looking, which is extremely annoying to someone, you know, like me, who, who doesn't, um, you know... I, like, he's just so, so good-looking. It's impossible not to be conscious of his overwhelming attractiveness when you are in his presence. Um, and... That, that mix of being really, really good-looking and also incredibly charismatic, it's just... <sighs> I just... I'm not going to lie. Marcus Zusak is one of the very few people I, I, I wish I was. Like, he's just amazing. Um, Scott Westerfeld? Also great. No, um, I feel like I feel like my I feel like my breathless praise for Marcus Zuzak is going to make all my other friends are going to be like, "Why are you being so nice about Zuzak? He's so handsome." Um, you know, it's not your fault, Scott Westerfeld. You're a good-looking guy, but you're no Marcus Zuzak. Um, uh, Scott Westerfeld is a, it, like was the first fantasy writer I ever read who like I like I got it. I got what everyone was so excited about, or um, like the first like so-called genre writer. I hate that word genre as if, you know, the rest of us don't write in genres. I write in a genre, you know? Um, Shakespeare wrote in a genre. Like his genre is such an insult. That's like a big insult for those of you who don't know. It's a big insult word that people use like, oh, he's just a genre writer. And like the genre is usually science fiction or fantasy or romance or mystery or young adult or whatever it is. And like, but it's like a way of dismissing a writer. He's just a genre writer. And, um, uh, whatever. Westerfeld is not just a genre writer. He's so, he's, his books are so smart and so interesting. And he wrote my favorite vampire novel of all time, Peeps, the one that imagines vampirism as a, as a parasite. Um, it's really, really good if you haven't read it. Man, I have to say, one, one, uh, uh, Stone Cold Steve with a C. Austin and Voluptuous Paracard are not uh, having a very effective day up front uh, for the Swoodley Poopers. Oh, no! And Rampage makes a terrible tackle. Oh, one size fits all has to save us. No, it's Rampage in the end who clears it off the line. Great work. Great work. Thank you. Thank you, Ginger Rampage. I'm sorry that I made you have an unnecessary slide tackle. Yeah, well, can we try a through ball? No. No, we can't. Um, so uh, 
But yeah, Westfield's amazing. His wife, Justine Larbalestier, also one of my favorite writers, um, uh, wrote a great book called uh, Liar and um, uh, How to <laughs> How to Train Your Fairy. If you've never read that, it's really funny. Um, uh, is also um, really cool. They have the most interesting house of any house of writer I've ever visited, or at least like when I visited them in New York. They ha they live like half the year in New York and half the year in Sydney, Australia, because I guess Justine has a morbid fear of snow. Um, but so they get to so it's always it's always summer in the Westerfeld Larbel SDA home. Um, oh, I'm playing terribly. It's because I'm telling stories about my friends instead of trying to score. Um, and they're going to say one size fits all made a foul, which I just disagree with because one size fits all doesn't know how to foul people. He only knows how to make clean, beautiful tackles. Um, so, uh, and, and then I've, I've made an entire video about Maureen Johnson and what I think about her as a person in her books. Um, Cassie Clare and Holly Black, I'll talk about them maybe in the second half. So when I was, the first time I hung out, I think it was the first time I ever hung out with Cassandra Clare, but it wasn't the first time I'd ever hung out with Holly Black, because Holly Black's been giving me and like most of my writer friends um, advice on plotting for years. And in fact, she's considered like the, almost like an oracle when it comes to plotting, um, when it comes to figuring out how to like, how to put together a story. There's no, just, oh, off the post! There's just no one better than Holly. But I remember one time I, I, I like drove all night with Holly Black um, back from a writer's conference somewhere, and um, and then the next morning we met, oh no, oh no, we can't lose to Redding. We can't lose to Redding. We can't, oh, Fat Lucas, hero, hero of the day. One size fits all, taking it out from the back. Could he go all the way? Only time will tell. I'm certainly going to try. No, no, he can't. I should learn that lesson that, you know, they can never go all the way from the back. All right, Stone Cold Steve with the C. Austin. Moving up. And a anyway, at that, at that breakfast, um, we had a conversation about whether trolls were people. That was one of the most intense arguments I've ever heard two people have, and it was about whether trolls were people. Um, I don't even remember who was on which side, but it was it was Cassie Clare and um, and Holly Black fighting like dogs over whether trolls were people. They agreed that trolls weren't human, but the question of whether trolls uh, should be assigned personhood it was and it was a very personal debate you know like very very intense um so that was fast that was that was that was like that was the first time i was like these are my people um hanging out with y writers um but uh and of course i must think pretty highly of my friend david levithan since we wrote a book together uh he's the author of um how we met and other stories and um a dictionary of love and uh, Boy Meets Boy and Realm of Possibility and Will Grace and Will Grace. Um, lots of other books. Uh, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, which was made into a movie. Um, and David is, is... So the reason... In some ways, like, the reason all these people know each other and it is really... Oh, finally! The breakthrough goal from Stone Cold Steve with a C. Austin. Great goal. Great stuff. He finally just broke away. Gotten used his strength to keep he's a complicated man stone cold steve with a c austin but as long as he scores goals like that it's hard to imagine selling him you know um that's not a foul fitz hall doesn't foul people that better be a yellow card okay i can accept that okay fitz calm down stay calm anyway um uh, so the whole reason that all these writers or one of the big reasons that all these writers know each other is um there's the conference circuit, like there's this whole, you know, there are a lot of book conferences and um, conferences of librarians and teachers and stuff that, that authors, that a lot of authors go to. And that's, that's one way that I met a lot of people who are, um, who are now um, friends of mine. Um, like that's how I met, for instance, uh, M.T. Anderson, who's another writer that I would list among like the best living writers in America not, you know, regardless of what kind of books they write. I think that M.T. Anderson is, you know, just an, like an actual and literal genius. One of, maybe, you know, one of, y you encounter a few people like that in your life, you know, where you meet them and you're like, this person is just, um, it's just a genius. <laughs> like, just significantly smarter than everyone else. And um, that's how I feel about M.T. Anderson. He's just, uh, he's just brilliant. Um, he really is. So, that's how I met him. But then a, a lot of the reason that we, we all met each other um, was because um, 
I used the RB button was because uh, David Levithan, in addition to writing books and being a famous editor of books, also just is relentlessly devoted to trying to build a community of young adult authors, um, particularly in New York, which is where you know a lot of these people live. Um, and we, Sarah and I lived there for a couple of years, but now, of course, don't. Oh, wow, that was a really good move from Reading. Red. Fat Lucas, thank you, Fat Lucas. One size fits all, taking it out of the back in a manner that my fans would not approve of because they want me to clear the ball more. Oh, no, it's going to cost me. No, it's not. Fat Lucas, he's unstoppable. You can't get it past Fat Lucas. He is a brick wall and a wide one. That was not a good through ball. I apologize to my fans. Come on, Voluptuous Paracard. Alice wants to see you score a goal. And he did! Voluptuous Paracard with a great turn. That was a borderline Cruyff turn. And then Stone Cold Steve with the C. Austin just throws him down on the ground like the semi-professional wrestler he might have been. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Um, and, I, I, and here we are in the 89th minute up 2-0 no on Reading, and I didn't even get to tell any, any stories about lots of my other writer friends. But, uh, uh, like, I think that um, it's, a real, like, it, it, it's a real privilege to, to know, um, to know and, and to be able to um, hang out with and correspond with, with writers. Um, but I have to say, like, that, well, that started for me long before I was published, um, and one of my recommendations to to young writers is always to find other young writers who are doing similar stuff to what you're doing, um, read their stuff carefully and thoughtfully, and talk to them with, about it, um, because generally they'll read your stuff carefully and thoughtfully as well. Um, and I continue to recommend that. I work, I, someday I'll make a video about um, the days at Not Mag, um, which is a sadly now defunct uh, web magazine, which I wrote and lots of other people um, who, uh, uh, I've kind of started out in my career with also wrote. There's One Size Fits Hall. Great game from Swindon Town. Not our best performance, it has to be said. But we didn't have our John Greens up front because they're taking a day off. Um, I would like to congratulate um, the, the center backs, though, for a heroic performance at keeping Reading from scoring, as well as Fat Lucas. Um, and uh, goals from each of our forwards, Stone Cold Steve with the C. Austin and Voluptuous Paracard. Good game for the boys, and um, I will see you next time. No, I won't. Best wishes.